Week two's here. Let's tell you who to sit. Coming up next. All right, guys. Week two sits for you, starting with the wide receivers. You know, uh, Robbie Anderson had a big week one uh, in that revenge game, but uh, there are some wording signs there. When you think about Robbie Anderson uh, and the game against the Jets, he only had three targets, caught one of them. Uh, it did go for a big, what, 56-yard touchdown, but, um, you know, that's that's not enough to get me excited and stick him back in my lineup week two. When you think about the Saints and what he's going to have to deal with, that's this isn't the Jets anymore that you're you're dealing with. You got Sam Darnold. It really just reminds me a lot of that old Robbie Anderson, Sam Darnold connection from New York where Darnold was going to toss it to him three or four times a game. And, uh, you know, every three, four to five weeks, you're going to see Robbie Anderson break a big game. He did it week one. I don't think he does it back-to-back -back weeks against the Saints. And, you know, it looks like if there's one guy um, that, you know, is up for a letdown in this game, it's definitely, for me, Robbie Anderson. Uh, moving on, DJ Chark, another guy that when you gloss over the stats, you think about, oh, man, dude, this guy... He had an 86-yard um, day and a, a and a touchdown in week one, man. All right, lock him into my lineup week two, man. This guy got 12 targets. Whoa, 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 whoa. He caught three of those 12 targets. That's a 25% catch rate, guys. Like, this is just more, like, inefficient catch rate from Chark, man. This guy is an, another guy that... We've been waiting for the talent to break out. And, you know, like, I, I need to see more, man. You got to do more with your 12 targets. Man, you get 12 targets? I I, I, I need to see 150 yards, a couple touchdowns or something, man. Like, 80, 86 and a touchdown with 12 targets? That's not very good. And then you think about the fact that, mm, guess what, man? This ain't the Houston Texans anymore. That's right. That's right, Dorothy. You're not in Kansas. You're you're playing the fucking Denver Broncos now. Now, I will say, it's the goddamn Denver Broncos defense is kind of the truth, man. It's really good. It will have the bend, don't break thing in between the 20s, but man, they're not giving up touchdowns. And and I, you know, I think this is going to be one of those things where it's going to be like, welcome to the NFL. You know, we got a rookie playing quarterback. You know, like we're we're going to, you know, Von Miller's on a mission to remind everybody I'm Von Miller. The secondary is good. Like, if this team isn't going to run the ball, they're going to just destroy this Jaguars offense. They're going to have to lean a little bit more into the run. They they uh, they they got to do more than than pass the ball to DJ Chark. It's really unimpressive what he's done with the work he's been given his these few years. There's been a few games where you've been like, yes, that. This isn't one of them, and I don't think week two is going to be one of them. I think he should be on the pine in week two. Moving on, running backs, Mike Davis. Woo! You know, after those first two drives, I was like, damn, Mike Davis actually might be pretty good this year. And then Atlanta and the entire wheels fell off, and dude, they are terrible. That offense is... Has that offense ever been anything but garbage when Julio Jones hasn't been there and Julio Jones isn't coming back to save him, man? Like, Julio Jones is gone. Matt Ryan is a fucking mess. Everybody's, like, thinking Kyle Pitts is the truth, and he probably will be at some point, but he's a rookie tight end, and you can't expect him to be waltzing in and replacing Julio Jones, a guy that's quite possibly going to be a Hall of Famer when it's all said and done. And, and you're just expecting a, a rookie tight end to come in and replace that production. Uh, I've just, we've never seen Matt Ryan really be hyper productive without Julio there. He's not coming back. Mike Davis is going to have to at some point, you know, be either, I, I he's, He'll probably be involved in the passing game. They're going to end up playing from behind. They are playing Tampa Bay. 
Tampa Bay has a lethal front seven. Mike Davis is going to have a real rough time. Do you, hey, hey, anybody remember how everybody's thinking, oh, Zeke Elliott, panic, panic after week one. Like, who can I trade him for? Can I, should I drop him? Like, is Tony Pollard the guy? Like, like it, it's the Tampa Bay defense that did that, everybody. And so now Mike Davis gets that defense. So I, I don't want to play Mike Davis week two. Dude should be riding fucking pine. Here's another one. Josh Jacobs coming off a monster week one. Monster, dude. Monster. Oh, thank God for Jacobs owners. That guy got two touchdowns. Otherwise, they'd be looking at 34 yards rushing and being like, what the fuck? So now Jacobs gets to go play uh, the Steelers. Uh, one of the toughest front sevens. Once again, seeing seeing the correlation between Mike Davis and Josh Jacobs here. They are playing lethal front sevens, teams that don't give up easy production against the run. Josh Jacobs, like, uh, I mean, this guy was, you know, looking pretty good his rookie year. Fell off last year a little bit as far as his efficiency. Efficiency, still a problem. Looks like he's got uh, a foot injury. You know, he's sick coming into the game. There's always something with Josh Jacobs. Meanwhile, Kenyon Drake there now to siphon off work. Like, he's actually siphoning off work, not the way Booker did, where Booker would get a, a, a sparingly used here and there. Like, Kenyon Drake's being used. He's being used in a passing game. Kenyon Drake might be the better running back in the end when it's all said and done. I mean, Josh Jacobs, like, I mean, that dude finds ways to fall in the end zone, but he has to fall in the end zone this week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like I said, a mean front seven in order to return the value. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting there once again being like 34 yards. So... Josh Jacobs, another guy, if you can find a way to like, I, like, I don't know, if you got Melvin Gordon, <laughs> if you, if you drafted Josh Jacobs and you had the, the foresight to draft, to, to draft a Melvin Gordon a little bit later, because you're like, Hey man, this guy is going to be used in this offense. Start Melvin Gordon, something like that. But Josh Jacobs, if you can, should not be in your lineup. And then, uh, let's think about, uh, maybe Saquon Barkley. Like, let's, let's not start Saquon Barkley. Let's think about, like, coming off a short week in which week one he was on a pitch count. So pitch count week one, short week going into a Thursday night game. Another mean front seven in the Washington football team. I, I mean, do you really, 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 really want to start Saquon Barkley? No, you don't. You're trying to find a way to get him off your fucking roster. <laughs> You drafted him in the first or second round, and you're already like, what the fuck can I get for Saquon Barkley? Because you know what? Like, you started week one. You looked at what he gave you. You looked at how he played. You looked at how that team played. He just doesn't look like he has that vintage burst, that vintage Barkley burst that we saw his rookie season. You know, this guy's got a lot of mileage on him, um, especially when, you, when you're including the injury history into this guy and maybe maybe the best is already behind him but you know at the very least this guy's probably not getting unleashed until at least week three so i once again uh barkley owners i imagine actually did make some sort of uh contingency plan you should have made a contingency plan you knew there was a lot of risk taking barkley that's why you got him where you got him Hope you made a contingency plan because that contingency plan needs to be used in week two. Barkley should be on your pine. Uh, and then, you know what? Uh, don't, don't get too excited about Jameis Winston's five touchdowns in week one. When you look at the, the this guy who, what, passed for like 150 yards, five touchdowns, threw a touchdown every four passes, uh, that's not happening again, guys. And um, although I do believe Winston's future in New Orleans – can work. I think that might actually work. I think they might found a quarterback that they can use for the next six to eight years and Jameis Winston. They're not letting him loose yet. Like this isn't going to be a name, uh, a game where they need to let him loose. He is just going to have to kind of play the game manager the way they did. They're going to run the shit out of the ball. I don't think Jameis Winston is going to be a guy that you need to 
to have in your lineup. I like I like the addition of Jameis Winston. I think he has the ability to be really good in fantasy if Sean Payton ever lets him loose. It's just going to not be in week two. They don't need to let him loose in week two. It, it wouldn't make sense for these guys. So, like I said, I think Jameis Winston should be on your pine. A few honorable mentions. Tyrod Taylor against Cleveland. I know he's got that rushing floor, but... Cleveland's a much better team. They actually were kind of holding the Kansas City Chiefs in check there for about almost two-thirds of the game. Almost. All right. It's not terrible. They have the they have the horses to kind of keep Houston in check. I don't I don't think Brandon Cooks goes off. Um I, I, I just think Tyrod Taylor's a guy that you should probably keep on your bench. Um, even if you acquired them now, if you're in a two quarterback league or a super flex, I get it. Um, that might make sense. That probably does make sense. There's probably a reason why you picked them up, but if you're in a one QB league, man, I think this is a guy that should be on your bench. Mark Ingram, another guy on the Houston squad, 26 touches week one, but they were 26 inefficient touches. I don't know if they're going to stick with Mark Ingram. He just another one of these guys like James Conner, where, just an off-season free agent acquisition that I don't know if it's going to really work. And speaking of James Conner against Minnesota, that guy looks like he's running in mud. I'm not sold. Um, I, I just think that eventually maybe they realize Chase Edmonds is quite a bit better and they just start handing him the ball a little bit more. And even if James Conner outtouches Edmonds, I believe Edmonds is the guy that has the bigger day for the Arizona Cardinals. And finally, Julio Jones against the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, I just, I want to see Julio Jones actually get inserted into this offense now. Um, uh, this offense looks so super discombobulated. It, it definitely didn't look like the same offense that we've seen the last two years. I think Julio Jones is the guy that I want to now see it before I get him in my lineup. Thank you, everybody. If you like what you saw, if you like what you heard, please like, share, subscribe.